Wow, this week is going to be so crazy. GM, GM, everyone, and welcome to a weekly episode of We in Web3, a podcast about you, me, them, basically people who are shaping the Web3 space and building the digital experience, from early adapters to newcoming developers, celebrities. I'm your host, Nikita Tsakaluk, and as always, we're building by people for people. Today, I have a very, very special guest. Uh, it's a very spontaneous episode. I'm having uh, Ian Utili here together with me. Ian is a guy who interviewed over 500 people already all around the world. Yeah. Ian is a guy who you should know from uh, the NFT NYC family uh, because he's one of the leading producer. He's one of the biggest supporters of the conference, uh, of the whole movement. Ian is a guy who's supporting podcasters, producers, interviewers, because that's what he's doing passionately from his heart. So yeah. Ian, I'm extremely happy to see you here today. Yes. Welcome, my friend. Yes, yes, IRL. Exactly. We, we actually are together. Exactly. We have Big Ben behind us. Exactly. Uh, that was the beginning of our week. Yeah. We, we uh, spent time with about 100 global Web3 leaders. I asked you specifically, yeah, you gotta fly in early to spend time with uh, our peers and our friends. We did that at Parliament, inside the House of Lords, uh, with some right of the there. Lords right there. And here we are, it's day one. It's the very, very beginning of NFT London. Uh, the team from NFT NYC have come to London to exactly. invite all of Europe the to first be time, here. That's it's right. It's a big day because it's literally beginning. Like uh, the intro stage started 10 minutes ago. So that's, that's right. Literally the beginning. You can see the big band there. You can see the London Eye uh, somewhere nearby. So yes. basically, we're in the London center. Yeah. That's how the NFT NYC family and uh, all the OGs from the US, from Canada, are brought here right. in Europe, center of Europe, London. So uh, it's a very special episode, yeah. first of all, because uh, the way how we connected with you was through interview That's right. with you. You interviewed me a couple of months ago for NFT London. That's right. Uh, you interviewed me three days ago yes. uh, in the House of Lords. Yes. And uh, I decided that the logical way of this continuation would be actually me to interview you. Yay. I assume that is something not that common for you because no. I know that you've interviewed like 500 plus people. Yeah. I, I, I've lost the count. Is it 600, 700, 1000 already? Because I know that yeah. some of those interviews are spontaneous like this, That's like right. five, 10 minute right. chats. So I assume that it might it's be- It's way a over 500 for NFT NYC alone. And it's about a thousand uh, for the industry, especially if I include people in the AI industry because I do uh, co-produce some AI events that are similar to NFT NYC. One's called uh, Voice Summit. We do that at CES uh, and in Washington DC, one's called Project Voice. So I'm fascinated by those that are building the future of technology. And uh, at my company, Attention Live, it's our eighth company. Uh, many of the people on my team have been with me for 10, 15 years. Um, we weren't quite sure how to build the product I had a vision for, we call Sonic Streaming. And I thought, you know what, the best thing to do, it's like five years ago, I said, I'm just gonna start doing future tech events. So I started doing these future tech events at Twitter's headquarters. At that time, I was an entrepreneur in residence for the innovation hub there. I was kind of getting ready for the next business. And uh, <clears throat> I started doing these events. And I figured, you know what, the best thing is if I can bring the most intelligent, uh, people, the people that are the most passionate, the greatest visionaries, the greatest uh, technical and developers, if I can get them to come sit down with me, whether physical or over Zoom, and I just ask them a bunch of questions, <laughs> there's no chance that Deloitte or Accenture or any major firm can get the type of market research that I'll be able to extract personally. Not to take anything away from that, but I'm also like a bootstrapping entrepreneur, so I wasn't really interested <laughs> in paying for anybody to do research for me. I'd rather build relationships, uh, build a platform that I can keep people on. That's exactly. right. That's right. Exactly. Building this community around you, and that's something that you, my friend, succeeded a lot, succeeded in a very huge way, 
Uh, so huge respect from my oh, side. That's the way how I connected with uh, your team, your wonderful team, uh, yeah. who is actually recording us here today. The guys were just on time. Uh, yes. We both were a bit late. The guys were there waiting right. for us. So <laughs> huge props to the team. And of I mean, course, the talent is late and the team is on time. Uh, that is the way always, things seem to go. Always. Uh, the team, uh, such champs. The question I have for you, and that is a logical one, uh, I assume, where do you get this passion and energy to talk to people, to be, because whenever you interview someone, and I've been following you throughout this week for a while, yeah. I've been having some private gatherings, private events, you're always smiling. Uh, even at the dinners that we had a couple of days ago, the yeah. VIP dinner for like uh, the top of the top, yeah. there were only 60 people and you managed to spoke, I do believe was almost all Most of them. everybody. With a smile <laughs> on your face. And yeah. it's been like, what, 8, 9 p.m., right. like a very busy day. So you have yeah. this passion, this energy. Where is it coming from? And how to make sure that our listeners, people who are starting their podcast, right there, people right. who are about to present on the stage for the first time, they get this uh, Ian-ish energy yeah. like you. Um, I think it's practice. Should be. <laughs> I, I, when I was younger, people used to say to me, because I like walk around like this. And he used to say to me like, you mad, man? You want to kill somebody right now? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm happy. I got joy on the inside, you know? <laughs> and I realized it's probably best for me to cultivate the, a, the exercise of smiling and expressing on the outside how I feel on the inside. Um, I really love people. Like I have a uncommon love for humanity and I, have so much respect for people in their journeys. So I think my desire to try and create this element of uh, you know, engaging with people is specific to my love for people and wanting to hear their story, even if it's not recorded, right? Wanting to like understand them, how they think, who they are, where they're coming from, and then think to myself, okay, what can I learn about myself? How might I change my perspective based on their perspective? And of course, with a smile, it just makes it all that much more enjoyable. You're giving this energy away and you're also receiving some positivity yes, because otherwise, why would someone talk to you if you're going like this? Right, it, it's right. a very interesting fact that I didn't know, so thanks for sharing it. Yeah. And actually what I'm doing here at uh, Web, uh, We in Web3 is also unleashing those stories of people because yes. you and me were connected for a while. Like uh, we know like uh, all the OGs are presenting here today, right. but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean that everyone else knows their story. That's right. And some of those stories, some of those, uh, some of those backgrounds, some unique points are shared in a very intimate atmosphere at yes. some gatherings, at some dinner, no one ever gonna hear it. But if the person yeah. is willing to share it, the only way is to actually encourage them, to invite right. them to a very friendly yes. uh, atmosphere, like we're having here right. today. It's not a Q&A, it's right. not any kind of official interview whatsoever. It's some things that we decided a couple of days ago spontaneously. Why would we wait for weeks to come back at home and right. have it through Zoom if right. we can touch Do each right other here. like this, That's right. have a friendly conversation in, the, in front know. of this that, that's the way. So I absolutely appreciate what you're doing yeah. uh, by creating this friendly environment mm -hmm. and bringing people there. Uh, let's talk about your connection with NFT NYC. Absolutely. I do believe that you've been with the team from almost the very, very beginning. Yeah. Uh, and I know that Queen uh, is joining us later uh, right. for a uh, live Frag Radio show. Yes. Uh, Cameron should also, uh, right. also pop up. So. The team is amazing. Amazing. The team is amazing in a way that uh, it's multi multicultural. Right. People of different background, of different vision, but somehow all together they combine right. this vision into one bigger, one stronger. Yeah. I'm extremely happy that we're having the first event here. It's because it's awesome. earlier this year I couldn't come to New York. Right. Uh, due to certain reasons. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Definitely coming next year. But here we are in London. Yes. So I assume that maybe in a couple of years there is going to be NFT NYC in Asia, or maybe in Australia or somewhere else, because that's a logical way of moving this. Sure. So what's your connection with the team and uh, what was the story of you starting at NFT NYC? So 
Um, I have a couple jokes I say about my role at NFTNYC. One is uh, I get to do what I do here because I was here first. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, you know, maybe I'm not qualified to do the closing keynote. Maybe I'm not qualified to interview 100 or 200 people uh, during our events. Maybe there's better people than me, but I was here first. You're, so. the, you're the OG. You deserve <laughs> so, this. So, you know, it's kind of like that is one thing that I recognize. Um, over time, I've taken less and less responsibility. And as things have gotten bigger, I've been able to uh, capitalize on the authority, right? So my, when we got started in 2019, my responsibility was real high. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there was nobody who had authority because it was just a bunch of friends getting together. You know, now that things have gotten so big, my responsibility has gotten less and less and less. I have very little on my shoulders. I don't operate it. I don't administrate it. Um, it's Jody Riches that runs this. It was his original idea with Cameron Bale. They came to Alex and Devin, then they came to me, and the five of us kind of got things kicked off the end of 2018. And between like December 2018 and February 2019, I did about 100 interviews on Zoom. And at that point, I was really excited about smart contracts, but I didn't really understand like NFTs, like as a, as a collectible, or you know, I just was excited about Dapper Labs, and I thought to myself, wow, the smart contract thing will automate my software companies. Like that was my attraction. I built software companies. If I use smart contracts, I can automate stuff. Of course. The other joke I say is I say I'm like the front man for the band, right? <laughs> I don't write the songs. I don't play the instruments. I don't set the band tour. I don't deal with any of the lodging or transportation. But because I'm on the stage, because I'm the one interviewing, because oftentimes people may get the false impression like, I am an organizer, but I don't want to be an organizer. I, I just want to love the people <laughs> and I want to do market research. Yeah. I want to still learn from people. And I, of course, I want the benefit for what I get from this personally and what my company, Attention Live, gets from it. The way this all started was in 2017, I had just, I, I was, had four entrepreneur residence roles. So I had ended one of my uh, companies, it was acquired by a private equity firm. Started an agency, had MLB, NFL, Absolute Vodka, ESPN. I had a bunch of major brands that were part of our agency. It was kind of like a small Vayner Media type digital agency. Sounds like. And then I realized, okay, time to start my next company, but I wasn't quite sure how to build it. So I became the entrepreneur residence at Twitter's Innovation Hub, at uh, uh, two global nonprofits, and then finally uh, at uh, the university in San Francisco. I thought the thing I need to do is start like gathering people together. So I started doing these events at Twitter's headquarters. The first was the future of tech, which I had a bunch of like blockchain, voice AI, um, people in quantum computing. And we started having conversations around NFTs at that time because of what happened with Dapper Labs CryptoKitties. I followed it up with like four other future events. And in June, it was the future of blockchain. I had it all set, the schedule was dialed. We had a packed room, 250 or so people. I had like a half million dollars of video equipment in that room. Cause I'm like, this is it. We're gonna tell the world about the exactly, future. You know, exactly. I'm making documentary, you know, all these crazy ideas that I had in exactly. my head. And a uh, Cameron calls me up like in May, like a couple weeks before the event. I don't know Cameron. Hey Ian, can Jody come speak at the event? I'm like, no, sorry, we're full. He says, well, can you just meet with Jody for lunch for like a half hour? And I mean, it's hard to say no to can you meet with somebody for lunch for a half hour. I'm like, okay, fine. So I go meet with Jody. A half hour turns into five and a half hours. And all of a sudden, he's Uncle Jody, right? Okay. And we have this really powerful relationship that's fostered in that moment. Uh, he gave me a ton of advice uh, in some of the things that were going on. I really took that stuff to heart. I thought, you know, I'd like this man to have a voice in my life. I think that he has a very different perspective than I do. So when he and Cam, Alex and Devin from OpenSea obviously decided let's launch NFT NYC, they decided that I think the month later, like July, he was saying at the Thought Leadership Dinner a couple days ago. Then when they reached out to me, I thought, you know what? I don't really like running events. Like I don't want to operate. I don't want to administrate this stuff. Like that takes away from my ability to smile and love people and ask questions and kind of do what I enjoy doing best. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to stop doing all my blockchain events myself, my NFT events. And then also I had something similar with a friend, Pete Erickson, with the Voice Summit, with Bradley Metrock, with Project Voice. So I kind of dropped all my 
NLP voice AI conversational AI stuff I was doing and I jumped into theirs and at that point what I decided to do was how about I'll support my friends that are really good at running events and I will just put wind in their sails, I'll put gas in their tank, I will be their biggest cheerleader and I'll find ways that I can serve them in the community so that they can accomplish their goals because I need these industries to thrive for the vision I have for Sonic Streaming with Attention Live to uh, man, you know, be manifest. So that's a little more flavor on wow. the background wow. of kind of my role, how I got involved. And then every year I've done about 100 interviews before we start. And then I'll usually do dozens, if not more than 100 on during, site. Yeah, during. like I'll end up doing dozens of interviews today. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, that's a very, very powerful story right here. Basically, at one point of time, you decided that, you know what, I'm going to stop doing what I'm doing here, and I'm going to do the same stuff, but with people who enjoy doing it and uh, at a, an event. Because back then, not many people knew about no. it. You know, it was like, <laughs> like not, not many people knew about NFT. You yourself, yeah. you said, and I, I, I started. I still wasn't sure. I mean, I didn't exactly. really understand NFTs. Exactly. I'm still exactly. figuring it out, everybody. Okay, okay. <laughs> should, should, should be good. Should be good. So basically, Jody Rich is the person who started all of it. Like, yes. uh, we should definitely give a huge shout out to him because without him, uh, wouldn't be Cameron out here, wouldn't be you out here, wouldn't be me. That's right. We will be there, but in a completely different way. We'll Maybe not all together. We'd be at a different event. Maybe not right. all together, yeah. yeah. Here we are all together. It's uh, an event. It's the biggest NFT-centric event. Yes. Uh, that is right now happening not only in New York, but also in London. That's right. Uh, that's the event that is gathering thousands of people. This year, here in London, we have 867 speakers, mm. I believe. Eight stages. This is just crazy. This is just panels fireside chats, yes. uh, solo presentations in two days. This is crazy. So if you're looking yeah. for a way to learn, that is the best event to be. That is yeah. the best event to connect with people, to learn, to just be yourself. Just right. be this giggy, uh, tech-savvy personality who knows about NFT or want to know or learn right. about NFT. So let's talk about NFT NYC team. Yeah. Uh, because obviously it's uh, much more than uh, just a two team, uh, two, two, two player team. Uh, we have also Queen, uh, yes. wonderful women, uh, woman who is organizing all these uh, gatherings, all these uh, uh, speakers, mm. ca capturing all this attention all together. Right. And she's amazing. And I know that she herself is a big collector. Uh, yeah. She or, uh, herself is uh, actually a person who understands NFTs right. uh, pretty well. And uh, you have a huge team of yeah. people. How do you make sure that you are staying up to date when preparing for these conferences, preparing for this event? Because I do believe that NFT London, I actually mm. remember the time, it was announced just like a week uh, or so after the That's previous right. conference. So it That's was right. announced like this. You, you, you couldn't have this normal breeze after right. the conference. It was already announced. Yeah. So you knew that you need to book the tickets to London right. then. Right. How are you making sure that the team itself is staying al well aligned with what is happening around the world, hmm. well connected and uh, organized? So let me explain the team in this way. Uh, and I'm gonna use American sport analogies, so excuse me for this. Let's go. You know. Jody is the coach, uh, and you know, uh, Cam and Quinn are both star players on the team. So if you took it like basketball, right, Jody is Phil Jackson, and Cam is Michael Jordan, and Quinn is Scottie Pippen. If you took like uh, American football, right, Jody is Bill Belichick, right, and Cam is Tom Brady, and Quinn is Grakonsky. So let's do one more with MLB. Yes. <laughs> Then or you don't Jody watch is uh, Tony La Russa, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and Cam is Mark McGuire, and uh, Jody, we'll say Jody's Jose Canseco, because why not? I, uh, I always joke that Jody is uh, the impetus of NFT NYC. She's the driving force. So she certainly is the one that is pushing a lot of things forward on many fronts. But Cam is the one that has really made this happen for the last, especially the first couple of years. It was like Jody and Cam and that everybody else on their team was busy with NFT.cred. 
But Jody's the risk-taking entrepreneur. So he's the one that really made this happen. He's the one that took all the financial risk. Anytime there was loss, anytime there was a bill to get paid, anytime there was an invoice that came in, anytime he, there was somebody that needed to be hired, whether a contractor or employee, Jody had to handle that. As far as the team like staying up to date on the industry, the advantage is having people that are part of NFT NYC that are already really passionate about this industry. So you don't have to like convince Quinn to stay up to date because she's going to stay up to date on the industry regardless. Um, the team has gotten very large, right? Last year, we had like over 100 volunteers in June, not even last year, just a few months ago. And we had, you know, probably over a dozen people that were like paid staff on Jody's team. This year, it's very similar. Probably less volunteers because we don't need them for this size of event. Last year, we had sold 16,000 tickets. This year, maybe a few thousand. Um, but to, that, that kind of gives you some context. But I probably am not the right one to answer that question <laughs> because I'm not necessarily involved on a day in, day out basis, right? I have yeah, the one who's I have the joy. I, 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 I have the I have the freedom <laughs> to do my own thing, to focus on my company, Attention Live, my own team that comes here. You know, I'll have about a dozen people with me on my team here for you know today and tomorrow, all different specialists and something, and we're collectively trying to accomplish different goals. But You're we don't have one. Yeah, I am. I, I, I feel very great. I feel very great. That's why you trusted these guys. You believed in them, yes. uh, in them at the beginning. You were the true OG, and that's how they are showing the respect to you back for you well, supporting, for, for you be, being with them. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Let's take a step back uh, to actually talk about your origins. Uh, Tension Life. Yeah. Uh, that's your brand. That's your company. That basically is the way how you make sure that you are relevant, that you are up to date in the whole industry and you know everyone. As you said at the beginning, you had this passion to, let's call it a market research, perform a market research of analyzing all these top directors, top managers, partners of uh, the biggest companies. Right. And you decided to do it on your own. Without yeah. any help, you decided to do it in order to create this strong relationship connection mm -hmm. with people. I know that your project, and that's something we've been discussing in details yeah. a couple of months ago, your project is also Web3 native. Right. You are also issuing NFTs, you're also connecting this technology on one side, this Web3 world, right. with uh, traditional world. Uh, and here we're talking about your passion for connecting with people, uh, you helping new coming podcasters, people who want to build their brand to connect with Web3 and build it in a more efficient, in a more yeah. decentralized way to actually get paid for it, to yeah. actually uh, track all the progress on chain. Right. Let's talk about it for a minute. Sure. So for the product that we invented at Tension Live is called Sonic Streaming. Uh, so I would call that our infrastructure, our tech stack. Our tech stack is three different inventions in one. Um, so I'll explain it kind of slowly. But let me give you a little origins in, in why it happened. Um, I'm, I've co-founded eight companies. Most of them have been software companies. And, uh, and then some have been like agencies and service companies as, that I do in between. Um, I mean, I've co-founded like dozens of things, but I've had eight companies that are like official companies, bank accounts, employees, etc. So I, I, I'm like more of an artist than I am an entrepreneur. I, I'm more of a creative than I am a businessman. Um, and so most of my companies have either been born out of like my own perceived need of what I, of what I need uh, and I don't see it in the market, and so I'll find a person or a team. Now, over time, I basically have had the same team follow me for thing after thing. All throughout my 25 years as an entrepreneur in the Silicon Valley, I have always kind of felt like there is this big need for a better communication tool. Absolutely. And so I felt very unsatisfied with the communication tools that have been in place. I remember when uh, Leo and Joel started Buffer and Ryan started Hootsuite and that's when Sprout Social popped off and Simply Measured and all these different tools. And I was friends with all those different founders and I'd be like, oh, maybe this is it. Maybe somebody figured out the right communication tool, but it wasn't, it was just a distribution tool for social media. And so then I would see like Zoom and I was intrigued like, oh, could Zoom be it? And um, certainly there's a lot there, but like still was lacking what I was looking for. I was looking for 
something that was very simple, something that anybody could use, that they could uh, distribute all their media, record everything, transcribe everything. And then I had these other crazy thoughts, like why should they use thumbs on glass and fingers on a keyboard? <laughs> why can't they talk to the application? Why can't the application talk back to them? Like uh, Amazon Lexi or Google Assistant. I say Lexi instead of the A word, so your machines don't fire off. Um, and then when I became aware of smart contracts, that's when I realized, okay, this is what I wanna create. I wanna create this thing that also is tied to smart contracts. So I want people to use our communication tool to put live, like in real time, live, like for instance, we could be using our tool, although right now it's only for enterprises, I don't really have it rolled out for individuals, but if I had connected it with you, we could be recording this video and live sending our audio to one or multiple YouTube, Twitter, Facebook accounts, and then we'd go to like podcast platforms, Spotify, Google Podcasts. We create a channel on Amazon, uh, Lexi, Google Assistant. So mass distribution, it's recorded, uh, and then it's put on IPFS, so it is decentralized in that nature. And then it can be transcribed automatically, so that way it's even more useful. And we have some other AI tools that we haven't told people about that are pretty bitching. Um, that's the media tool. The part that I'm thoughtful of, the three billion people in the world that don't yet have the internet, they're gonna get a watch or a ring or a pair of glasses that they're gonna talk to. I want Attention Life to be like an app they're using. So I want them to be able to talk to that application and listen to your podcast or create their own podcast with their voice. All that is very exciting. Like that alone, a voice interface using NLP tied to an ultimate all-in-one uh, content creation, distribution, marketing tool would be fantastic for Probably any marketing massive. team, every university, every teacher, every religious institution, every religious uh, speaker, every radio station, every <laughs> podcaster, <laughs> every marketing team, every CEO, like you name it, they're gonna like that tool. So I knew that. The hardest part for us was I wanted it to automatically create NFTs that tied to that content and was on a marketplace. Exactly. I wanted to do it for a few reasons. One, I wanted to protect people's intellectual property. I felt like NFTs was the most realistic way to protect people's IP. Two, I wanted people to be able to divide ownership. So if you and I are doing this podcast, exactly. ideally there's like at least two NFTs. Yeah. One that gives you commercial rights to everything you say and non-commercial rights to everything I say and vice versa, yeah. right? Or maybe we'd have many, like yeah. we have one that's owned by us for our own content and we each have one that gives us commercial yeah. rights to each other's content. Maybe we give non-commercial rights out to everybody that watches for the first hour. Yeah. So I thought NFTs protects IP, engages an audience, right? If you and I premiered this video tomorrow in a month, and we said the first 100 people that jump on and watch the premiere and leave a comment on YouTube, we're gonna give you a one of many 1155 ERC token. Well, now all of a sudden we're compensating our audience with a token that's kind of like a POAP, but maybe it has non-exclusive, non-commercial rights to the content. Now they have the legal right to make a user-generated video, to cut a splice of something brilliant that you said and make something on TikTok. So for me, I love this all-in-one approach, this media tool with a voice interface and blockchain integration. The issue is when I thought of this idea five years ago, I started flying around the world. I came here, I went to Germany, went all over the United States and some other areas. And I was trying to figure out like, who can make this happen? And is anybody, is the infrastructure possible to be there? And I felt like it wasn't. And so I thought, well, let's just focus on the media tool. So we built the media tool and I started working on the white paper. So I worked on the white paper with our chief of ethics, Ted Haas, worked on the white paper with Christos Makritis, who is a big part of this environment. And uh, Christos has two PhDs. He has a PhD in economics. He has a PhD in uh, mathematics. So Christos made all my ideas like these crazy academic ideas. And from that, the white paper was done. We filed our provisional patent, got that approved. And then we filed our non-provisional global patent against these three inventions that we call sonic streaming. Once the patent was filed, not that I'm gonna enforce it necessarily, I patented this idea because it was my invention with my team and I wanna make sure nobody could ever stop me from doing this. Um, but once the patent was filed, that day, we released the white paper. And then that's the day we started onboarding people to our platform. So we onboarded, like, I think 74 people off Clubhouse. And I thought, this is it. Like, we're going to have this explosive experience. Unfortunately, our product was super manual. <laughs> and it took, like, 
too much time. So even if it was like three minutes, sometimes 15 minutes just to use the product, what happened is people are like, I don't care how good this product is. I don't care if it makes NFTs for me, if it goes everywhere. I don't want to talk to a machine. I'm not used to doing that. So people are like, it was too early. So that was a couple of years ago. And I realized there's no way for Attention Live to scale to my ultimate goal of billions of people around the world, ideally the most impoverished humans, that it's very soon will get the internet, will have a device to be connected, and I can educate them through our application, maybe even compensate them, maybe empower them to be teachers of the world themselves, if I can't scale it at least to 10,000, to 10 million, exactly. you know, scale first world good. people. So we rebuilt it and it just took us forever. <laughs> so we rebuilt it, we laid it out for the enterprise uh, in the last couple months. Yeah. And we've had some good success with agencies, with publishers, folks like that that have a ton of content. And now at CES in January, we'll be making the announcement and we'll be releasing it for consumers. January 2020. Yeah, CES is January nice. 5th through the 8th. Last year they had me co-produce their NLP and yeah. Web3 and Metaverse, Absolutely. conversational AI stuff. I'll do that again this year. Huge. And so that's a good environment, right? We have the world there, we have the media there, and so it's a Absolutely. chance for me to really capture that moment. This is something huge that you are doing. You are bringing, for now, entities, all their own, like, individuals to this space to actually own your content, to actually distribute it in a more efficient way, yeah. and to do it in a fun way, not right. just sitting in front of the Zoom camera. So one thing that I heard from you is that you were unsatisfied at the beginning. Right. That's why you started your company. I do believe that is the strongest, the biggest motivation out there. Mm. You being unsatisfied with what is around you and you creating the better environment. Right. So I absolutely appreciate you doing it. Uh, you already shared with us what's next for uh, Attention Life in the next couple of months. Right. I do believe that asking what is next for you, that's not the most accurate question just because the, uh, the space is moving so fast. Yes. But I can answer the question what is next for both of us. Yes. We're good friends. Right. We're staying in touch. Yes. And we're definitely coming to New York. Right. Uh, whether it's June, July, whatever, we're there. Right. And when I'm back, when we are back uh, in New York, I would love to repeat it. Yes. Have another one with you, yeah. live. Uh, in front of whatever doesn't actually matter. What matters to me right. is to actually have you live, to have this interaction well, with you. It, it would be interesting for us to go live on multiple channels. Absolutely. And maybe to have like something on our team by then, that's like taking questions. Like exactly. I, I think I think that could be a really fun thing. For exactly. Us. Maybe yeah. by back then we're gonna use Tension Live to actually yes. distribute it. Well, most definitely that, that'll most be definitely because ideally we're minting an NFT against our conversation. Yeah. And anybody that's watching live, we're compensating yeah. them for their attention by giving Absolutely. them a po-op with real utility, Absolutely. like non-exclusive, non-commercial rights, or maybe, you know, access to us on Zoom. We'll have to kind of see. Let, let me share something, some things that are coming up yeah. that I haven't mentioned, because uh, I want you to participate for one. Um, so Jody has had probably 100 major cities around the world mm -hmm. ask to do events. Uh, he has not decided to do events. This is the only other place he's decided to do one is London. And that's because his first meetup was here. Yeah. And so he always wanted to come back. Okay. I also have had dozens of people ask me, like, will you help me launch this and launch this and launch that? And I've always said to people, hey, I want to support you. I want to be a, a, a fan, but I have very limited time. And so I can just kind of give you some advice and I can try to show up. I'm happy to come speak and things of that nature. But there, I did realize I'm missing something right now. And what I'm missing is time with my peers. So I, I want to spend time with the men and women that are actually building infrastructure. Like I want to spend time with the CEOs and CTOs of blockchain yeah. uh, to layer ones yeah. and, and layer two protocols of the marketplaces, of the metaverses, exactly. of the agencies, the community builders, those that are really actually building things like the, how, how the global leaders. So the first thing I decided to do was to do something here on Monday at the House of Lords. And I had people fly in from all over Asia, <coughs> North America, <coughs> South America, and Europe. And there were several dozen of us that flew yeah. in. <coughs> and then I invited some local people. And yeah. so there was like, you know, more than 50 local people that showed up. And that was a chance for me to kind of spend time with these folks and to let them all be in the same room with each yeah. other. So I'll be doing this in Manila, Philippines. 
on, uh, I think, Tuesday, November 29th. Yes. And so a lot of people will be at Art Basel, yeah. but for those that won't be there yet, I'm going to say, hey, come, let's spend time together uh, for kind of a global Web3 you know, reception. It's a way for them to make it. Yes. Fun. Now, I'll do that in Vegas yeah. during CES, January 6th. And then I'll likely do it at my treehouse in Santa Cruz. So I, I live in a treehouse in Santa Cruz yeah. uh, in the forest looking at the ocean. And that is going to be, uh, you know, a time for me to kind of bring people together longer, to spend time together. And then finally, uh, a big one in Orange County. And so that'll be March 6th. Now, there's more that are coming up. I'll do something like this for yeah. NFT NYC. I'll do something like this in other regions. Yeah. I think NFT yeah. Seoul yeah. is something that I'm pretty excited about yeah. right now. Uh, the one for Manila I mentioned is tied to Philippine Blockchain Week. So I, once a month or so, I'm hoping to bring together global leaders to spend time together. And I'm in. I'm absolutely in. I, would I got one. Yes, Everybody, you got I one. got one. <laughs> I see that people are already coming. We have the next space. Uh, one more question from yes. my side that I just quickly wanted to ask you. When I meet you back in New York, what yeah. is one thing that you would ask yourself uh, to make sure that you're satisfied with the journey? What is the self you would ask your future self? Are you laughing? York? Okay. Do your kids That's a good do your one. kids love you and do they feel like you're a present father? Uh, does your team feel like you put their needs before your being own? Being alive, being real, being alive, being realistic. Yeah. I, I love it. I'm going to ask you know, this question. Things like that. I'm going to ask this question <laughs> for sure. I, I don't really care. Business things come and go. I mean, that stuff is, you know, uh, personal branding comes and goes. I've been in this thing for a long time. I'm exactly. much more focused on, like, uh, how am I doing in my relationships? Being realistic, how am I doing? Being in, first of all, my relationship with myself. Like, am I a happy soul? Exactly. Because you know, if you don't know this, happiness is an inside job. So if you ever complain, it's just a reflection of the fact that you, you. Forgot, you, you forgot that you have to regulate your soul. Exactly. And I'm going to ask this question for sure. We're going to rewatch it. We're going to go it. through it with you. Here at We in Bat 3, I have a small tradition. At the end of each episode, I'm asking my guests, to give this 15 second elevator pitch uh, regarding uh, what is Web3 for you? Why a general audience, like people who will be listening to you, like to Web3 podcast for the first time, why Web3 is the future? Why that is the way? So what would be this 15 second pitch from your side? Web3 is technology to automate processes. It is made for the people by the people, it is decentralized. It is meant for the common people, the 99% to create and to own without any sort of roadblock. It is the ultimate automation tool that will allow humanity to thrive in ways that we've only dreamt of. It is the most likely catalyst to lead us to an anti-dystopic future rather than dystopic future that entertainment constantly is trying to shove down our throats. And to that I say congratulations for all of our children and great, great, great grandchildren that will benefit greatly because of the work that we're doing today in Web3. Congratulations to us because yes. we're here right now and we're building this future. That's right. Ian, I absolutely enjoyed our conversation. Yes, it's a lovely place, I know. lovely spot. people. You're amazing. Oh, we're gonna spend the well. next couple of days with you more. So thank you very much yes. for coming to my, uh, to my episode here today. I love the podcast. So glad <laughs> to be on it. Yay. You're amazing. See you, Bye, everybody. <laughs>